So this is the Android head unit that we've switched over to now. Uh, this actual interface is in a little app you buy. I think it was $1.99. That allows you to have your preset buttons and a nice logo in the middle and all that kind of stuff on there. Um, to get access to the back, so I've popped out the vents that come either side. They're just on those little uh, pop connections at the top. So there. And they just basically pop in and pop out so you can get easy access to all the wires and everything behind. Um, there's a little cage that's in there and this just kind of sits inside that cage. And what all I'm doing is attaching through the cage there. You can just see, let's see, that's the new cage in there. So all I'm doing is attaching that to this bit. So I'll just put some self tappers in there and a locking nut behind it. And that way I can attach it in and secure it in place. But we've mounted it so that it just sits on the top just like that. Uh, I've actually taken it out today because I've been fettling with it. I've actually added some new speakers um, all the way up there. And the same again on the other side. Um, because the speakers in the doors aren't great. You've got um, sort of a mid-range, low-range speaker there. Um, and then a tweeter there. And they're not great. So by adding the two little speakers just up there, it's just allowing us to get a bit of a, a richer sound out of it as well. But yeah, for... 80 odd quid just over 90 quid i think it's brilliant it's an android system um it is you know a basic system it's not the state-of-the-art android system or anything like that but it does the job so this is our old zenek head unit um not only was it a rubbish display but it was rubbish software and it was just rubbish as you can see it's quite hefty lots of wires there as well uh, all i've basically done is chop into those wires for ignition live and also the speakers. I've actually wired our new head unit back to being the uh, the leisure battery is powering everything via a switch. So that's semi-fitted now. The power cable's there, two USB, and then the camera cable, the reverse camera cable. I've not used any of the other ones, um, so I've just kind of taped those off to get them out of the way. Um, and then obviously the aerials for radio and GPS. So that's it fitted at the back there, all done and dusted. And I put the brackets on the side as well, so I can just squeeze it into the slot there, get it all fitted. So that's it fitted. I'm sure you don't need me to show you where all the cables and wires go. Um, I have not used the camera that's come with it so far because the van's already got one on. So I've just wired it straight in there. And what I've done is um, I've put two USBs, because it comes with two USBs, so I've put them in there. So one's got our memory stick in there and the other one's just blank for now. So that's the two USB ports that it comes with. Um, and I've stuck the GPS receiver there and then just tucked the cable inside there and then connected it all back there. And compared to the old stereo, this thing, I mean, obviously the screen's a bit smaller now, but the screen was dire. Whereas this one is really good. I can actually see behind me now. It's just like an Android tablet and the fact that you can go you know, between different apps. So you can install any apps you want. Like I say, we've put um, Amazon Music on there, and the Here, which is a free um, sat-nav system. Obviously, you've got Google Maps as well. Um, radio Player, I've put that on there, so you can listen to any radio station, you know, DAB or FM station. Um, it's just brilliant, and the screen size is great as well. Nice and clear. I just sat here last night for a couple of hours, pulled out the old stereo, and then one by one with a cable, just went through them. You can see on the back there, went through and chopped off all the speaker cables from the old one and then just put them in this one. Beautiful thing about this one is it connects to your Wi-Fi. So obviously we've got Wi-Fi in the van. So that connects to Wi-Fi. It could be a hotspot on your phone as well. Um, and that then just pulls the information straight through. So it's downloading now through the Wi-Fi. You can play music through the Wi-Fi and um, just do everything you can do on a normal tablet, except it's in the middle of your dash. It's nice and well fitted there, and it just looks great. Uh, the navigation system is brilliant. Hands-free is okay. If you are traveling down the motorway and it's quite noisy, people do say that you know you have to speak up a little bit, but the microphone is built in there, and there isn't an external socket on the back for another microphone, unfortunately. But obviously you can put um, radio on there. It has got a built-in radio, so you can plug an aerial in and it'll do that. We use um, a radio player app, 
so that we can play any station in the UK. These are just some favourites. Um, we can play those and it just works over the internet because it is a Wi-Fi enabled system. So all of the stuff on there is all over Wi-Fi. Um, and like I say, you've just got access to all the normal apps on there. So you can go into the Play Store and load apps. You can load up um, any other apps. So you can have Spotify for your music. We've got Amazon Music, um, Camper Contact, uh, Camper Stop. And that app there, the Agama Car, is the interface I'm using now. And I prefer that interface than the original one that comes with it. But like I say, you've got Park for Night and all that kind of stuff there as well. Um, as far as browsers, you can load up, obviously, um, Chrome. I've got Opera Browser. The Opera Browser comes with a built-in VPN as well. So if you do want to use it for streaming content, you know, from different countries, then the Opera, Opera Browser works fine with that. So Follow the course of the road for six miles. There we go. So it's going to give you speed alerts as well. The speed of the road you're on, your speed, and the time that you're going to get there, hopefully any delays along the way and the direction of travel, as well as obviously the directions, how long you got into your next turn and everything else. And that's all included for free. Just gonna turn the ignition on now and then put it into reverse gear. And there you can see the camera showing up the car park behind and the bike rack and everything else, lovely and clear. And like I say, I was thinking I was going to have to change this camera because it was um, absolutely useless on the other screen. But on this one, it's great. So what it actually does, it pauses the music, mutes the audio, and then puts the screen on. So yeah, really happy about that. So one thing I am liking on this uh, little screen is the um, wildcamping.co.uk location app. I think it's pretty cool. So these are all the locations around Cornwall and stuff like that. And you can change the map layer on there. So if you wanted to look at the terrain map, you can do that. And obviously there's different locations for different things. So you can see all the different types of um, points on the map, points of interest and stuff like that. Some are park ups, some are water closets, laybys, public house, that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm really liking that one. So if you go to wildcamping.co.uk, click on location app, um, this will pop up. And say so if you do fancy um, a little spot there, so if you click on that one, um, obviously it's going to tell you a little bit about it, where it is. Um, and then the beauty about that, like if you click on that, it takes you straight into Street View. And then you can just simply look around that location then to say, oh, do I want to park up there? Is that all right? That is a tiny little car park, isn't it? So, really like that. And once you come out of it, just click Street View. That brings you back to the location map. So the rest of the system, like I say, it's just um, a standard Android system on it. So it's not the fastest on the planet, I must admit. The audio sounds pretty cool. Like I say, you can actually get YouTube on there as well. So if I launch YouTube. So like I say, these are all the uh, YouTube interface and all that kind of stuff as normal. So if we go there and go to our channel. And then just choose anyone so we can click on that one. And it'll just start playing. little park up last night it's just down the side of a little river bank like I say really good Sadly, all the usual here. YouTube features for skipping so I think this stereo is absolutely brilliant the tiny little snag with it is you do require a little bit of soldering because the stereo uh, cables for the speakers and the power cables do need to be sort of uh, soldered up to connect them properly but apart from that it went in really easily and I know um, Ivervan Mark um, has actually got this in his Avico which the dash actually comes out sort of like there it's not a flat dash so they're quite universal in the way that they can be mounted as well pretty good really um, but yeah it's an Android 9 platform 
which means you can run most Android platform software on it. Now and again, it might come up with a compatibility hardware error, but I can run all the things like, um, you know, camper contact. Like I say, I can run the wild camping app and Amazon Music, Spotify, um, all the different sat nav software and everything I put on there. Um, the hands free kit works great as well. Obviously, we've got a quite a noisy van anyway. Um, so we do have it on kind of the volume on full when we're in a conversation driving down the road at 60 miles an hour. People can hear us, but they do say it does sound a bit noisy, but that's just the van. The downside about that one really is that it'd be great if there was an external microphone point on the back so we could put another microphone up there or something like that instead. Um, but so far, really impressed with it. Been using it for about now three, four weeks and um sat nav's working fine you know it gets us where we want to go the fact that um mandy's been able to use it as well is great and even i can use it <laughs> which is brilliant because i hated that other stereo so clunky whereas that is brilliant absolutely fantastic it even shows how many satellites which i'm sure john's covered anyway but <laughs> yeah i love it it's brilliant go buy one endorsed by mandy <laughs> If something's Mandy proof, it's then good. that is a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. Very true. Uh, it links up to the phones okay. Software um, seems responsive. It's not the best, um, greatest, you know, sort of spec or anything like that, but it does the job. We've put a little bit of a switch on it as well so we can use it like we are now without needing to have the engine running. Um, even comes with a free reversing camera as well, um, although I've kept the original one. The reason why I actually changed this was the original Zenek, I think it was called, it was about £900 that they installed, was useless. And I was thinking of changing the rear camera because I really couldn't see it every time we put the van into reverse. It was just nothing really. Actually, it was that stereo. The screen was rubbish on it. The software, certainly sat-nav software, was rubbish. Um, you tried to play USB music and every time that you stopped and started the vehicle, it reset the whole thing and you had to start picking your playlist again it was just like pathetic really so that's what i thought i'd take a bit of a punt on this for 89 pounds and so glad we did now especially um we were getting quite frustrated with the stereo you want to listen to tunes when you're driving down the road don't you and you want a sat nav system you can rely upon so i can report after four weeks of using this it does that and more um certainly decent sat nav software and you can load anything android on there as well you can use just uh, google maps if you want to do it as well really impressed with it i think it's cool the way that it sits around the the area a little bit as well so that it makes it look a bit like a like the modern um mercedes screens like a floating screen that kind of thing and the audis and stuff like that maybe a tesla yeah motorhome tesla but very impressed with it so uh, yeah hope you like the review please do give it a thumbs up and if you've not already please do subscribe so if you're watching this one you're wondering what else we get up to then um, yeah go check out all the other videos in the channel and subscribe and we'll see you around take care then bye <laughs>